between now and the next five days, we may not only be dealing with one, but two significant cyclone situations in the Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf, and the East Coast. I am also going to explain to you the situation with current Hurricane Larry and what our saving grace will be to keep Larry away from the Northeast. We all know just how quick things can change, not only in the Gulf, but in the Atlantic Ocean as a whole, all while remnants of Ida leave not just the Gulf in Louisiana, but the entire Northeast underwater and in shambles. Let's get into it, my friends. Here we go. <laughs> Good morning, my friends. September 2nd, 2021, 1057 AM. And we're going to look at two different charts today. The GFS and the CMC are Canadian friends. And we got a few reasons for that. One is obviously Larry. And second is a nice Gulf storm we see pop up. And I only think it's fair that we go ahead and explain that because it may or may not be this exact disturbance we're looking at here, 20%. And we will get to that. But of course, we have Larry here. Already a hurricane at 75 miles an hour, 987 mil bars in pressure expected to get a lot bigger and a lot stronger and that is more than likely without question as we can see here we followed this with Ida as well these symbols here are very important H means hurricane clearly M means major hurricane that is once again anything over a category 3 of 111 miles per hour or higher I'm sure many of you have heard the term fish storm before and that is when a storm or a hurricane forms gets big takes a name but doesn't affect any of the US land or really any land for that matter. We can see that the formation took place and it's forecasted to stay in the Atlantic Ocean making a bend up towards the northeast. Now we've got some explaining to do and I'm going to do that as best as I can using two different charts here on Ventu Sky. Right here we have the GEM or the Canadian model pulled up which is going to show and explain the possibility of tropical storm slash hurricane Mindy forming in the Gulf and then coming right through you guessed it Louisiana and Texas it looks like possibly shifting towards Mississippi Alabama and then of course we have Larry right out here as a nice strong storm and keep in mind this is five days from now so this spot you're looking at right here is the seventh so within a five day time range the Canadian model is showing a big hurricane in Larry making its way west towards the United States and the Northeast expected to curl out towards St. Thomas we are going to look at all the details with that all while this Gulf storm seemingly comes out of nowhere and puts Louisiana and the Gulf states back in the crosshairs so we're going to break down both of these situations and find out what's going to cause what and what's going to cause the other. And again, that's going to happen right here on Ventu Sky. Here is the GFS model, and I put our altitude high so we could see the jet stream. And this is very important because the jet stream is the reason, or could be the reason, that we don't have a U.S. landfall of Hurricane Larry. In fact, it's the only reason that will keep Larry away from us. So if anything changes with this jet stream dip, we may see Larry make a landfall in the United States without fail. As you can see here, these spaghetti plots have this thing in a west northwest direction consistently and then making a nice long arc as of now swooping back out into the Atlantic Ocean. Once again, our jet stream does what it's supposed to do. We are far enough away from Larry being up by the northeast that the jet stream can easily change between now and then. Not only that, but the rapid intensification of Larry is very much expected. We've been watching this since day one of the invest. A very steep and quick intensification of this storm, bringing it to a major storm, possibly within the next 24 hours. Take a look at this. We could see see Larry as a major category three storm within the next 24. Obviously not a threat to the United States at that time. We'd be looking way over by this area and we're going to line that all up and give you all the details you need on this. All the details you need and we're going to continue to do that each and every day as the data changes. So we are here on Ventu Sky. We are going to go day by day and you're going to be able to visualize and see the jet stream moving west to east across the United States as it always does. And just as Larry is swooping up towards Bermuda for example, we see this dip in the jet stream comes. So we're going to do that right now. We are on Thursday the 2nd. That is today. We're going to go one click to Friday and we can see Larry moves a decent amount to the west and to the north. Keep an eye on that northern movement. We are now going to move to Saturday the 4th and here we are now parallel with Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic and Haiti as it moves west along the warm water belt. We can clearly see the flow of our jet stream each click. Now we are moving into Sunday the 5th. We see a more of a northern hook.
hook. Again, our jet stream flowing more along the northern coast of Canada and the U.S. over the Great Lakes. Now, as we move into Monday, we have a major storm here. And keep in mind, this is the GFS, so we're not going to see that storm in the Gulf. We're going to get back to that after we finish with Larry here. But we're starting to see a slight dip in the jet stream coming off the Carolinas. And then we see a heavier spot of the jet stream right here. And I want you to watch this area right here during the next click as we move into Tuesday the 7th. And there we have it. That long, dark spot bends down just underneath Chicago, it looks like, right here. So this is that down dip of the jet stream that we need to take place because it is the only thing that is going to create that force field, that wall that's going to then push Larry at the exact right moment, right about here, back out to the ocean. And you're going to see that very, very vividly here on the 8th Wednesday. We can see that wall is very much created. It's very much there, right up the northeast through Long Island, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Maine, and parts of Canada. And now we have that blockage, which is going to save us from Larry. Of course, we have situations where the jet stream is not the only force that's affecting hurricanes. Of course, when we get down to the Caribbean, we have highs and lows that come and go all the time. But this is a perfect example of how our jet stream actually helps us, especially when it comes to storms coming to the northeast. If you guys remember, we've had a lot of storms forming off the Carolinas as it comes west to east into the Atlantic Ocean, we've had a few storms form here, and it's the same concept. It's our jet stream pushing out low pressure systems that then reach that warm water and then blow up. This time, it's the opposite. We have a west coast storm following the warm water belt projected to go right into the northeast of the United States, but then with a quick swoop of the jet stream, we have that force field wall, and this thing may, as we go hour by hour now, start getting picked up and slowly hooked back out into the Atlantic, as we're seeing here on Tropical Tidbits. And just so you can see it in motion, I'm going to go ahead and hit play here, and you're going to see the interaction with Larry and the force field of the jet stream, and it's going to give you a visual of exactly how it works. Here it goes right now. You can see Larry moving up to the north and already being pushed to the east by that jet stream movement and hopefully this is exactly what happens anything can change in a small amount of time keep in mind in fact the jet stream is known to change more than anything that's why we had such different outcomes with hurricanes like Irma and a lot of those storms in 2017 so even though we have the forecast of this being a quote-unquote fish storm that is only because that the projection of the jet stream is supposed to be very heavy and very southern dipped at that time and now what we can do is incorporate that same information into the Canadian model as well, which shows the tropical storm forming in the Gulf. We can see that right here, but that doesn't change what happens with Larry. We can see the Bermuda Atlantic bubble kind of wrapping itself around Larry as it wants to move in that northern direction. Remember, cyclones naturally want to move north without any sort of interaction with other influences. So we see Larry moving up to the north, and then just as it is, we have this big low pressure system up over Canada, creating the dip in the jet stream. So we'll have that dip coming right about here and it's going to push Larry out, but that back half of the dip is what's going to allow this storm, if the Canadian model is right, to be sucked right up into Louisiana. So almost a double-edged sword situation here taking place, according to the Canadian model. And I apologize if a lot of this stuff is repeat information for you, but I have to explain this stuff in order to then go ahead and explain why we see some of these spaghetti plots now branching off, as I said they would, into the United States. I had a lot of people giving me a hard time about even talking talking about this storm that seemingly wanted to just curl out into the Atlantic, but now things are changing. We're seeing the breaks in the jet stream. We're seeing more and more models shift to the eastern coast of the United States, putting the storm in a more western direction. Things begin to take on a whole new meaning once you look at the data and understand all the different options. And finally, I'm going to do the same thing here with the Canadian model and hit play. And you're going to be able to see how the jet stream is affecting these two storms. Larry will come up to the north. The jet stream bent down, creating that force field wall along the northeast but also the back end allowing this storm right here possibly to move right up into the Gulf. As far as that goes, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves as far as the next five days. I'll continue to put out the most available data for this storm and the jet stream front that we hope is actually going to come and be here by the time Larry makes it up towards basically the threshold of the Carolinas, because that's when things are going to get interesting and see Larry as a major hurricane out in the Atlantic. My friends, thank you so much for watching. Sorry about the late post. Had some stuff going on this morning, but I will be back later on this afternoon or tomorrow morning for normal scheduled stuff. Shout out to Canada, and we will go from there. Stay safe, my friends. I'll talk to you all very soon. Bye-bye. Stop right there, my friends. If you have not already, click that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Click all, and you will get all notifications from this channel. And trust me, you won't be disappointed.